Good afternoon, international comrades, and to our migranteng kababayans, magandang gabi naman po sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas at mapagpalayang pagbagi po para sa ating lahat. Before we start, here in National Democratic Line Online School, we condemn the killing of Karen Dalechanis who have been martyred by the state forces last Monday. Karen Dal is the third peace consultant who have been killed under the Duterte's regime and is one of the political detainees under that is released after the People Power Revolution and has been detained again under Arroyos and the Aquinas regime. He is the chairperson of an Aktawis party list and an NDFP peace consultant. Until his death, he never stopped serving the masses as he carried the call of the land distribution, land distribution pushing it through the genuine agrarian reform bill at the Congress and comprehensive, comprehensive agreement on socio-economic reform or CASER and the NDFP GRP peace negotiations. We raise our heart and feast to Karandal, voice of the peasants, farmers, and the lasting peace. At the same time, today is the third death anniversary of Kian de los Santos, an innocent 17-year-old boy who has been killed by the state forces of under the Duterte's violent war on drugs. Till now, Kian's family still have not received justice. Kian and Karandal's death only signify the gruesome fascism of the Duterte's regime. And it's always every day that we need to act and fight for their justice and lasting peace. Justice for Karandal, justice for Kian, stop the killings, oust Duterte now. Going back, welcome to the National Democratic Online School. Uh, this is the basic principle of Marxism and Leninism. Today, we are going to tackle the historical materialism. Last week, we have discussed the, um, the dialectical materialism. So if you have missed it, you can find it posted on our page, www.facebook.com slash Europa. Today, we will continue the discussion again on the, dis the historical materialism. At magpapatuloy pa rin po ito hanggang sa mga susunod na linggo. So make sure to note this on your calendars and catch updates on our Facebook group and the line online. Please. Patuloy po tayong mag-imbita ng ating mga kaibigan at kapamilya para makisali at makialam sa ating diskusyon. If you have questions to Tito Joe, to Professor Joma, just drop it on the chat box or the comment box and later after the discussion, we will have a question and answer portion in which Tito Joe can answer your questions. Makasama, let us start the uh, discussion. Please welcome Professor Joma Sison. Hi Tito, kamusta po? Mapulang pagbati po. Warmest greetings, revolutionary greetings to Angelo and to all our listeners. Uh, we are going to have the second uh, episode in this four episode or four part uh, series on the basic principles of Marxism. And uh, I thank you for uh, having the, the patience on, and the curiosity <laughs> to, to participate and try to uh, um, uh, get something from uh, this uh, study that we are conducting. All right. Tito, okay, we uh, go on to the first question. I know. Today, we will discuss again the historical materialism. So this is the application of dialectical materialism, which is basically we have discussed last week on the study of the various forms of society and their development from one form towards another. So nothing is permanent except change. This also applies to society, of course. So what are these different forms of society that we have had so far? Uh, from a primitive existence of food gathering and hunting, humankind has developed five major forms of society in the following sequence. Primitive, communal, uh, slave, feudal, capitalist, and socialist. The classless primitive communal society took the most part of human existence to develop from the old Stone Age to new Stone Age, from no nomadic clans to settled tribes, and further on to intertribal alliances and societies that began to use metals, especially bronze for production and war, and engage in agriculture and animal husbandry. Class society has prevailed in um, a number of millennia and has uh, changed quite more rapidly than primitive communal society 
and in a cumulative way because of the development of the mode of production and superstructure of society. There is a discernible sequence of the different uh, forms of societies because a certain form of society cannot arise without germinating first in the womb of a previous form of society. The universal law of contradiction is at work in every form of society and in the transition from one form of society to another, but different forms of society can coexist, interlap and overlap over varying geographical scales. Just consider how the settler colonial society of the U.S. imposed itself on the Indian native tribes and then used African slaves to make feudal plantations yeah. and create the big agricultural surplus to export uh, some of it to England and import modern equipment to build industrial capitalism. Tito historical materialism also seeks to comprehend the interaction between the material base and the superstructure of society. What is uh, meant by the material base of society? The material or economic base of society is otherwise called the mode of production in the exact terminology of Marxism. Yes. It consists of the forces of production and the relations of production. The forces of production in turn consist of the people in production and the means of production available to them. In class society, the relations of production are determined by the class that privately owns the means of production, organizes the people in production, and distributes the means of subsistence to those who toil. As regards to the interaction of the mode of production and the superstructure, the former arises or develops in time ahead of the latter, which however in further time can either delay or accelerate the development of the productive forces, depending on the main current uh, or character, reactionary or revolutionary of the relations of production and the entire superstructure. In due course, we can further discuss the interaction of mode of production and superstructure after we explain the content of uh, uh, the superstructure. All right, Tito. The mode of production is significant in society. It consists of the forces of production and the relations of production. So what are these? And can you please give examples on the role of the mode of production and in the development of society from one form to another? In a slave society, the slave owning class owned the metal tools, <clears throat> land, work animals, and other means of production. They also owned the slaves and used them as beasts of burden to produce the biggest amount of surplus. They had the power of life and death over the slaves, gave meager rations, and appropriated all the products of their labor. Slavery was perpetuated due to inheritance of status, failure to pay debts, commission of felonies, and captivity in wars, abductions, and trade. In countries where slavery evolved the feudal society, the slave owners used the slaves to open and cultivate large agricultural lands. This would be called the latifundias in the ancient Roman Empire. Then it became unwieldy for the slave owners to manage the slaves on vast uh, areas of land and uh, um, the uh, uh, slaves could slacken in their assignments or even run away. Thus the so-called enlightened slave owners opted to become feudal lords and turn the slaves into rent-paying uh, serfs. Uh, at first, they were given the illusion of uh, uh, owning a piece of land. They work on it for some days, and then on the other days, they work on the land of the uh, of uh, uh, the landlords. In feudal society, the people in production that produce the biggest amount of surplus, especially with deep plowing that used metal instruments, were the serfs who worked on the agricultural land or who tended to the animal farms owned by the landlords. The landlords allotted pieces of land for the serfs to till and uh, obliged them to pay rent and render extra services. In the womb of feudal society, handicrafts 
trading and other sideline occupations based in the towns developed and gave birth uh, to the bourgeoisie who emerged from the ranks of the masters of the handicrafts guilds and from the traders between town and country. From the stage of handicraft workshops where the individual artisans could make whole products, manufacturing developed with ever higher division of labor among the workers. Still further on, industrial capitalism arose with large scale uh, machine production using electromechanical and chemical processes and concentrating larger numbers of workers in factories, mines, and other sites. In socialist society, the private ownership of the means of production is replaced by state and collective forms of ownership. Class exploitation by the capitalist class ceases. State economic planning ensures the growth and improvement of the productive forces in accordance with priority given to satisfying the, need, the basic needs of the people and expanding production. Agriculture is the basis of the economy and the basic and heavy industries are the lead factor uh, with light industry producing the consumer and producer goods for households. The growth of the economy is aimed at raising the wage level and the people's standard <clears throat> of living and paving the road to communism. How about the superstructure of society? What is meant by that? The superstructure consists of the political and cultural institutions, organizations, ideas, practices, and social relations above the mode of production at the base of society. It is sustained by a major part of the surplus product created by the exploited class at the material base or the economic base of society. It reflects the dominant interests of the ruling class. It encompasses all the personnel instruments and methods for coercing or molding the mentality of the people to give loyalty to the incumbent social order. The highest form of political organization in the superstructure is the state. It seeks to perpetuate the law on the ownership of the means of production of the social order. For the purpose, it uses persuasive political methods, as well as the use of organized violence. The state becomes conspicuous as an instrument of class oppression, consisting of such apparatuses of coercion as the army, police, courts, and prisons. Whenever the ruling exploiting classes uh, uses it to suppress the just demands for reforms and revolutionary movements, the cultural institutions and organizations, ideas, and practices express the interest of the ruling class. The dominant religions, the formal education available, the history and characteristics of dominant and related uh, ethno-linguistic communities. They serve to endorse and support the ruling system and captivate the thoughts and sentiments, as well as the traits, customs, and habits of the people. Tito, what is the relationship then between the mode of production and then the superstructure? The ruling class in any society controls both the mode of production and the superstructure and use them to perpetuate their class dominance. The mode of production is in charge of the economic wherewithals of the society and provides the uh, economic uh, uh, surplus for maintaining and expanding the superstructure. If I may explain in simple terms, no? Uh, without production and uh, without the food, clothing, and shelter that you have, you cannot engage in philosophy, uh, in music, uh, uh, in uh, whatever higher forms of social activity above, you know, uh, above, uh, above ensuring that you have uh, the means of subsistence so you don't starve. No? So first of all, you must ensure that you don't starve. No? Uh, for you to be able to exist and uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, operate at higher levels of social existence. The, the working people are responsible for sustaining the facilities, lives, and activities of the politicians 
the military and police, the philosophers, the academicians, scientists, priests, artists, and creative writers who inhabit the superstructure. The superstructure involves a few political and cultural personages, but they are attended to and assisted by many more people who belong to the exploited and oppressed classes. When the forces of production grow to such an extent that they run against existing relations of production, the class struggle becomes conspicuous and becomes reflected in the various aspects of the superstructure. As, a, as a, I have earlier pointed out, the mode of production arises or develops in time ahead of the superstructure, which, however, in further time can either delay or accelerate the development of the productive forces, depending on the main current or character, revolutionary or uh, reactionary, uh, of the relations of production and the entire superstructure. Can you please discuss the superstructure of the various forms of society? The political and cultural institutions, ideas, social relations, and practices in the superstructure reflect in general the mode of production, especially the relations of production. While the superstructure evokes mainly the political and cultural dominance of the ruling class, it also reflects, it also carries and reflects in due time uh, the growth and advance of the productive forces and the uh, growing resistance of the exploited class to the dominant relations of productions as well as uh, uh, to uh, the dominant political and cultural uh, relations. You see, um, uh, the big bourgeoisie control, controls all the means of education and entertainment, but the revolutionary uh, movement in uh, current times, as you can see, uh, uh, they, they can uh, set up cultural organizations and engage in all kinds of cultural activities, challenging the dominant uh, cultural system of the ruling class. In the superstructure of slave society, the state arose as an instrument of class rule. It consisted of the government with distinct agencies, with personnel for decision making and for administering society, and most importantly, with the apparatuses of coercion, which uh, uh, enforced the laws to maintain uh, slavery. In the institutions of learning and in cultural works, the, the idealist kind of philosophy was favored against the materialist kind. So, you know, in ancient Greece, uh, you have the dominance of the idealist, uh, especially Plato, and then the materialist philosophers were practically uh, suppressed. Their writings uh, uh, would be buried uh, by the uh, bigger reproduction of the works of Plato and the like. The rulers invoked supernatural authority to legitimize their rule, even as there were political and cultural mechanisms where the free men could participate. Um, you know, in Greece, uh, what they call the Democratic Assembly uh, uh, act uh, actually would involve the slave masters and the freemen, the slaves who are excluded. And uh, so, uh, but the illusion of uh, democracy in an exploitative society is usually conjured no? by the political, um, um, uh, political uh, um, activities. Uh, jointly held by uh, the ruling class and the intermediate class. Um, so that was the case in ancient Rome. So is, it is also the case in the present uh, situation where the intermediate class or so-called middle, middle, um, uh, middle class um, is a um, um, is a some kind of device. Huh? Uh, for creating the illusion of democracy. In the superstructure of feudal society, the state was the principal instrument of the monarchy and the feudal aristocracy who drew power for their ownership of land and control over the serfs. In Europe, the Roman Catholic Church became a powerful partner of the state. It gained power 
by being the spiritual legitimizer of the feudal system and by accumulating land. By, uh, by uh, spiritual legitimizer, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, saying all the time that the authority of the king uh, came from God, no less, no? Uh, but contradictions and tensions could arise now and then between the church and state, even as these collaborated in influencing and dominating the minds and behavior of the people. In the long course, the resistance of the serfs often invoked the scripture, uh, and the liberal bourgeoisie arose to invoke uh, science and um, uh, reason uh, against the feudal system. You know, uh, the, um, the most um, acknowledged peasant revolt uh, in Europe, uh, the revolt of Thomas Münzer, no? Uh, uh, you must remember that he, he himself was a minister, and so it's no surprise if the, uh, re re the rebelling peasants uh, invoked uh, uh, the scripture to justify uh, their uh, rebellion against their, the oppressors. But then at the same time, the liberal bourgeoisie um, arose on the basis of the development of manufacturing, especially by the time that manufacturing was uh, uh, already developed, with uh, the Netherlands coming out as the first uh, country with the most uh, developed manufacturing, that's in, uh, as early and as the 16th century, 16th to the 17th century, uh, the golden uh, age, so-called. And then in France, uh, the Industrial Revolution actually started with the steam engine no? in, in France. Eh? And that would become the basis of the uh, French Revolution, which had a liberal, uh, bourgeois liberal character. Uh, later on in the 19th century, uh, the in UK, United Kingdom would become the unchallengeable, un, 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 uh, unchallenged uh, 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 chief industrial capitalist power. In the superstructure of capitalist society, the state is the class dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. It has developed further as a system of organized violence against the proletariat and other exploited classes as well as instrument of uh, persuasion and conjuring the illusion of democracy through elections and parliamentarism for making the laws and mechanisms to perpetuate <coughs> private ownership of capital and land and for engaging in colonialism and eventually modern imperialism. To develop and draw more profits, the bourgeoisie used science and technology, built academic institutions, and even instituted public education more than the feudal system did in order to serve the expanding uh, requirements of industry, businesses, and government. In the superstructure of socialist society, the state is the class dictatorship of the proletariat to stand for upholding and developing socialism and defending the people against the bourgeoisie and imperialism. Uh, the class dictatorship of the proletariat serves to create and develop proletarian democracy, uh, the, the exercise of coercion, class coercion, or is against uh, the, uh, the bourgeoisie that might reemerge and um, the international bourgeoisie or imperialism that continues to threaten a socialist society. The institutions and organizations are expanded tremendously and they promote the materialist scientific outlook, methodology and morality of socialism. The proletariat as the leading class is dedicated to building socialism as the first phase of communism or as a phase transitory to communism. Tito, what can we say that a society is right for radical transformation? It was Lenin who clarified when a society is ripe for radical transformation. First, the society is already stricken by a crisis that is so severe that the ruling exploited, exploitative class can no longer rule in the old way. Second, the people are desirous of revolutionary change. And third, a revolutionary party has arisen and developed to be strong enough to lead the revolution. 
In the time of Lenin, Russia was ripe for revolution when Tsarism and then the bourgeois government of Kerensky could not extricate themselves from imperialist crisis and war. The broad masses of the people and the Soviets of workers, peasants, and soldiers wanted revolution and the Bolshevik party was strong enough and ready to lead the revolution. The semi-colonial and feudal ruling system in the Philippines is in a chronic socio-economic and political crisis. The oppressed and exploited people are therefore desirous of revolutionary <laughs> change, and the Communist Party of the Philippines has grown from small to big and from weak to strong on the nationwide scale and is strong enough to carry on the People's Democratic Revolution uh, through uh, protracted People's War. You know, the Philippine Revolution, the Filipino revolutions have learned from the example of China. The chronic crisis in a semi-colonial and semi-feudal system yeah. provide the basis for protracted people's war. Uh, because, you know, in, in the uh, um, previous understanding uh, of revolution in um, uh, for so long a time before uh, the development of Maoist theory on people's war, uh, you know, uh, as Saint Thomas Aquinas said, no, the revolution uh, to be built, to be good must be done quickly and must be successful, no. Uh, so the idea of revolution was, you know, it was the quick uprising, it was a quickie, no. Uh, it, <laughs> it's a, a quick run. It's sort of a quick run to the motel, no. It's not a long process <laughs> of uh, mobilizing yeah. people for a long time and inflicting. Uh, uh, casual, uh, casualties on the enemy uh, in a cumulative way and then uh, also um, gathering the, the victories in a cumulative way. All right. Um, Tito, what are the, f um, the roles of mode of production and the superstructure, superstructure in the process of transformation of society? And the mode of production starts to become outmoded when the forces of production have grown so much as to strain and tend to break the existing relations of production. Uh, you know, um, in, uh, you know the war, in the history of capitalism, the capitalist class is the one who creates the working class because it needs the workers uh, to produce the, um, uh, to, to, to work and to provide uh, the uh, surplus value or the a source of profits for the capitalist. And um, so, but the, a time comes when the working class um, moves up in its consciousness from the, just being aware of, its, uh, of uh, their own existence, a, a class in itself, and then the level of consciousness rises to the level of the class for itself. Uh, and then it begins to form unions to complain and make demands against uh, against the uh, starvation wages, and then uh, the uh, that uh, level that of consciousness for the working class rises further uh, to the level of uh, revolutionary ideas. When the working class grows so big because of the growth of industrial production, the capitalist ruling class can no longer solve the recurrent an ever worsening crisis of overproduction, even by resorting to monopoly capitalism, fascism, and war. Then the conditions are ripe for revolution by the working class. But the class struggle is not limited to economic struggle in the mode of production or economy. It must also become a class struggle in the superstructure, in the political and cultural fields. The class struggle in the superstructure whips up and inflames the overall class struggle. The capitalist class thinks it can limit the class struggle to the confines and premises of its factory over issues of wages and working hours, but the workers gain more freedom of action and gain political power through political and cultural organizations and movements of the entire working class and the rest of the exploited people. Tito, is transformation of a society possible if the class being ruled does not fight? No radical or significant transformation of society is possible if the class being exploited and ruled does not fight or remains weak because of 
uh, objective con limitations due to material conditions or they are not aroused, organized, uh, and mobilized to fight effectively. What I mean, you know, uh, the struggle of the exploiter being limited by material conditions, you know, they cannot uh, aim for socialism if the, they are uh, within uh, the material conditions of feudalism, no? Uh, you'll have to have the, the, the achievements of capitalism first, no? Uh, to have the platform eh, for aiming for uh, socialism. Or let's say if you are in slave society, you cannot uh, uh, jump to, ca to uh, uh, let's say, the uh, position of the workers in capitalist society or in socialist society. But of course, you must remember that uh, all, ki all types of uh, uh, all types of um, uh, all forms of exploitation already exist in uh, in uh, slave society. You know, in slave society, you have the wage earners too. Well, but it's not yet the main form of exploitation. No, the main form of exploitation it is uh, extracting, is is making the slaves work that to produce the biggest surplus. And uh, also, there was already among, especially among uh, uh, the uh, well, there was already the element of feudalism, certainly for a long period of time in uh, slave society. Even if uh, um, in ancient um, uh, times the slave society could evolve into a few uh, feudal society, there were the slave revolts and slave uh, runaways to persuade the slave masters that it was more clever and profitable to convert the slaves into serfs. You know, in the slave, in the slave society, yes, of course, because of the extreme exploitation, the slaves would rise up, but then uh, they, uh, they uh, could not go any further. And uh, the most, uh, in, the, in the feudal society of France, the liberal bourgeoisie was able to win the liberal democratic revolution and seize power from the monarchy and landed aristocracy by raising the rags of the poor plebeians and serfs as their flag and actually availing, availing of their anti-feudal class hatred and mobilization in the revolution. But now there is the industrial proletariat, an exploited class that is the most productive and politically progressive force and that is the potential for taking power from the bourgeoisie and other exploiting classes uh, and for allying itself with uh, and expand, expand, emancipating and for allying uh, itself with and, and emancipating all other exploited classes. This is a class for carrying out the radical rupture from the the millennia and institution of uh, private ownership of the means of production, which has been the basis of exploitative uh, uh, class society. Tito, is having a vanguard party required for social transformation? Or has the society not been changed before by mere just spontaneous uprising? Or what is the importance here of a leading party? <laughs> In the current world era of modern imperialism and proletarian revolution, it is absolutely necessary to have a vanguard proletarian party to lead the revolution in any society ruled by the industrial monopoly bourgeoisie, as in capitalist countries, or by the comprador big bourgeoisie, as in the semi-colonial and semi-feudal uh, Philippines. Anywhere in the world, in the current era, no proletariat, and people can wage a revolution against the domestic bourgeoisie without taking into account the intervention or aggression of the, inter uh, of the international bourgeoisie, or at least a block of imperialist powers. And you know, you must, we must not be able, to, we must not uh, underestimate, of course, the cunning and the uh, uh, material and mental resources of the bourgeoisie. Uh, the, um, uh, that is uh, uh, exist in one uh, country and has access to the uh, support of other in, uh, uh, imperialist uh, uh, that is the support of imperialist powers. 
The proletariat is the class that is the ideological, political, and organizational strength and resources to lead the revolution against the big bourgeoisie and has close relations with the peasantry and other exploited classes as allies. In slave society, the slaves engaged in uprisings against the slave masters but did not have all the necessary means and conditions for leading the transformation to the next possible form of society, feudalism. In the long history of China, there were big peasant uprisings, but there were yet no conditions for feudalism to advance to capitalism. Then, when a peasant uprising succeeded in overthrowing a feudal dynasty, it merely served to install a new uh, feudal dynasty, the peasant leader, uh, who is successful in overthrowing a dynasty, himself becomes the founder of a new dynasty. In uh, modern times, democratic revolution as in France in uh, 1788 to 1789, or the peasants can ally themselves with the proletariat to make the socialist revolution as in Russia and then in China in the era of modern imperialism and world proletarian revolution. Tito, can you please explain how social transformation has occurred in the history of mankind from primitive communal, slavery, feudalism, and capitalism? And how certain are we that the next social transformation will be towards socialism? In all major social transformations from primitive communal society to the various forms of class society, the universal law of contradiction was at work and took various forms in accordance with the concrete conditions. In primitive communal society, significant contributions occurred quite slowly in tens of thousands of years because of the most underdeveloped mode of production. Um, it took a lot of time to advance from the old Stone Age to new Stone Age, from the savage period of the nomadic clans and the barbaric period of the tribes. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it also took a lot of time to advance from barbaric period to class society through the development of bronze tools and the settled agriculture of intertribal societies. The progress of um, <clears throat> social development depended on what kind of instruments of production the people had at a given time. Uh, you know, there are those who present uh, primitive communal life as a paradise. You know, uh, it was not at all a, uh, a, the paradise of Adam and Eve. Uh, uh, when you have only, really, when you have the rudimentary tools of uh, production, uh, you really have to do a lot of muscle work uh, uh, to gather the food and to hunt uh, for, to root, uh, to, to uh, <coughs> uh, bring up the, uh, the uh, root crops from the ground, no? So, um, anyway, uh, by the time that the so-called civilization came, starting with the slave society as the first form of class society, social progress could become much faster than before because of well-developed metallurgy, agriculture, uh, breeding, more, um, breeding more people, the rising of literacy and numeracy, um, even the rise of um, uh, philosophy in the Athenian academy, and advances in the division of labor, together with the class division of society between the few owners of the means of production and the many who did not own such means and had to work for others in order to survive and subsist. As the means of production advanced, so did the people in production increase and improve their productive skills. When the growth of productive forces breaks the existing relations of production, a new form of society is on the way. <clears throat> and the class struggle intensifies in class society and becomes reflected by and becomes dialectically interactive with the class struggle in the political and cultural aspects of the superstructure. We have seen in a few centuries how industrial capitalism 
has made achievements in economic and social development several times far greater than all the previous forms of society with the use of electromechanical, uh, chemical, and biological processes. Quantum physics has brought about further advances in the application of um, in the application <coughs> uh, in both the mode of production and superstructure. Unfortunately, the monopoly bourgeoisie uses all these advances for exploiting the proletariat and other working people, worsening the crisis of overproduction and unleashing state terrorism and wars of aggression. After all the irrationalities and injustices under neoliberalism in the last four decades, the toiling masses of workers and peasants are rising up in anti-imperialist and democratic struggles for a socialist future. The crisis of the world capitalist system is now rapidly worsening, and the only way to overcome the dangerous escalation of inter-imperialist contradictions is for the proletariat and peoples of the world to unite and intensify their struggles against imperialism and all reaction. We are now in transition to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. Thank you so much, Tito, for um, having us, for um, answering our questions. Um, we will now then proceed to our question and answer portion. So if you have um, questions for the discussion about historical materialism, just drop it on the comment box of our live video or in the chat box in our Zoom. Um, then so Tito Joe could answer it. But before that, um, but before that, uh, we will be having just a quick break. Let's watch this video for Kian de los Santos for our break. We'll be, Andy Line will be right back for you. Dahil sa kuha ng CCTV ng barangay, kitang bitbit ng dalawang nakasibilyang pulis, si Kian Lloyd pakunta sa direksyon kung saan ito napatay. Ang nangyari dito sa 17 years old, bigla kong naalala ang aking sa mga Ang ama ko po ay pinatay. Isang taon na pong nakakalipas. Hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin pong hustisya. Anong sabi? Nanlaban! Sikwenta los años! Nanlaban! Ang kuya ko, pinuha nila sa loob ng bahay. At kukuring ko sa presinto. Saan ko nakita? At ang po ako magkakabi sa Morinayo. At sabihin ang tatay ko. Pakalipas lang ilang buwan. Tinuwa ako at tinulot mo ako sa secret jail na yan. Pilihan nila kami. Siya na isang lako ang bahay namin. Anong ginawa ninyo? Money under the table. Ako mismo ang nagkakot ng pera sa inyo. Mga timba niyo kayo. Imbis na ipatubad niyo ang totoong batas niyo. Na ipakulong niyo kung sino man ang may sala. Bakit kaming mahihirap? Ang pinagpidiinan ninyo! Hindi po makatao ang ginawa nilang pagpatay. Kasi po, lahat po ng bata na nasa loob ng bahay na pinagpahan niya. At sama po ang aking anak na napatay. Pinagpaparil po nang wala naman po silang kasalanan. Nag-iinayang po po, gabi-gabi po ba po, upi makatulong. Palagi po kong umiiyak hanggat nga hindi pa nabibigyan na kadarungan ng anak ko. Ngayon na naman po, may narinig na naman po kami na napatay na bata. Hanggang kailan po kayo titigil, Presidente Duterte? Magulang din kayo. Humihingi po kami sa inyo na itigil nyo na po ang patayan. Ultimo anak ni Duterte na pagbibintahan niya yun, pero ginudyo process siya. Tapos itong mga may hirap, pinapatay lang ng piglaan ng di alam. Duterte, Bertugo! Duterte, Bertugo! Um, everyone, so if you are um, fond of books, uh, we are plugging this um, online store, which is the, the Foreign Language Press. So this is an online store for books. Um, today we are discussing basic, basic principles of Marxism and Leninism. So we have a book there that is being sold. So if you are interested, you could visit flpress.storenv.com and you could see 
um, uh, um, an online store for books there. They they sell all the revolutionary books and all um, books that tackle socialism and other um, things, as well as uh, philosophy, Maoist in India. Uh, they, they offer a lot. So it is a must that you visit uh, flpress.storenv.com which is a Philip the foreign language press and um, for you to know more about the website so um, aside from that let's uh, tackle the uh, let's let's proceed to the next video uh, for our break this is um, a video from Alter Media um, tackling uh, war on drugs <laughs> Sa gitna ng pagdiriwang ngayong Kapaskuhan, tahimik na nagdadalamhati ang maraming naulilang pamilya sa mga maralitang komunidad. Katulad ni Lian, pangatlo sa pitong magkakapatid. Noong Agosto 25, pinatay ang kanilang nanay at tatay, mga drug suspect, sa loob mismo ng kanilang bahay. Ano na Na, naantok na kami, natulog na kami, tapos pinatay na yung ilaw. Tapos, natulog na kami yan, yung mga sandali lang, mga stress. Yung po, po sila yan. Una po yung papa ko. Si mama naman po nagmamakawa, sanabi niya po na, nag-ano po sila, nag, nag sumuko naman po sila, ba't nila papatayin ka sila. Tapos sabi sa akin, lalaki na daw po. Tingin ka, abarilin kita, tinutukan po ako ng aral. Sabi ng mama ko, huwag na po, huwag po, huwag po, anak ko yan, huwag yung abarilin. Madami pang pangarap yan, sabi ko ng mama ko. Tapos, bitarin ko ng mama ko. Tapos yung papa ko, magalaw pa yung paa. Parang lumalawan pa siya. So, ako lang din yan kaya kasi, tapos pa yung utak niya. Tapos po yung dugo po dito niya. Tapos lumapit ako sa kanya, niyakap po siya. Kaya lahat po na dugo na sa akin. Niyakap po po siya niyo. Tapos di, iiwan yung naba ako. Sabi ko sa kanya, sabi niya, wala. Tapos yung mama ko naman po, pagyakap po po sa kanya. Tapos pag, pagkaganon ko po dito sa ulo niya, ginaganon ko yung ulo niya. Pagkaganon ko, nabutas hanggang dito na yan. Kamay. Kamay mo. Apo. Gaya ni Nalian, tatlong batang babae ang naulila ni Marco, isa ring drug suspect na pinatay noong December 10, Human Rights Day. Isang taong gulang pa lang ang bunso nila ni Isabel. Nagulat na lang po kami, biglang bumukas yung pinto. Pagkabukas po ng pinto, ayun, may mga polis na na pumasok. Tapos malalaking mama po si Len, tataas, tapos ano, ma, ano, tapos may mga ano sa katawan, yung bullet po po, gano'n. Pinilit nila, paalis yun, pinalabas kami ng mga polis. Yun, tapos nung pagkapwersa sa amin na palabasin kami, may, nakarinig na po ako nun ng putok. Sabi po nila, Yung asawa ko po nakaluhod, nasa may pintuan namin, nagmamakaawa po sa kanila. Mihingi ng tawad na huwag nilang anuhin, ganun. Kasi hindi naman po makakalaban yun sa kanila. Tapos yun, ano, yun, sabi nila, bi, binaril na dito sa may dibdib. Tapos after siya anuhin doon sa may dibdib, siguro po hinatak siya papunta doon sa may durabox namin may cabinet. Hanggang sa doon na siya napuruhan, yung binaril po siya sa ulo. May padron ang mga pagpaslang sa mga drug suspect. Nakabonet ang mga salarin. At may uniformadong mga pulis na nakaantabay sa labas ng pinangyarihan ng krimen. 
Ganito rin ang nangyari sa tatay ni Ann na si Gilbert, isang matador sa palengke. Ano po, dumating daw po yung maraming pulis. Pagkatapos daw po, eh, habang tumatawag po sa akin, eh, ano po, may sinisira po yung bahay namin. Mali, sabi, may dala daw pong maso. Pini, pinipilit daw pong sirain hanggang nasira po yung pintuan. After po nun, eh, natutulog po yung tatay ko. Tapos po, nung nagising po yung papa ko, eh, sabi niya po, sandali lang po, sir. Pagbukas nga po ng tatay ko, eh, dapa, sabi ng polis. Tapos sabay, pagkada pa po, biglang binaril agad. Sa leeg po, tapos po sa ulo, bali, posok po yung bungo ng papa ko. Tagus po siya dito sa kabila. Diyan po sa may loob ng bahay, tapos labas po yung utak. Ang sabi daw po, meron daw po nakapampulis, meron naman daw po mga nakasibilyan, tapos nakasuot po ng mas. Nakamas po sila para hindi po nakita yung mukha. Bali, mata lang po nakikita at saka bunga. Tinataboy ng mga otoridad ang mga kaanak habang nililinis nila ang mabakas ng krimen at umano'y nagtatanim ng ebidensya. Yung mga pulis, nung time na, time na pinatay yung anak ko, Nagmamakaawa ako sa pulis na papasukin nila ako. Kasi mama niya ako eh. I- hindi ako ibang tao na ano, nanay ako. Ba- ayaw nila ipakita sa akin yung anak ko. Hanggang sa naglupasay ako dun sa kalsada. Nagmamakaawa ako na papasukin ako. Ay wala eh. Pinagmumura ko nga lahat ng mga pulis dun eh para papasukin ako. Pero hindi sila naaawa sa akin. Kahit nag- ando na ako na halos gumapang sa kalsada. Nagmamakaawa ako sa kanila. Wala, tawanan pa ng tawanan ng mga putang inang mga pulis na yun dahil naka-uniforme sila. Sabi ko nga, lusobin nyo ang Malacanang, lusobin nyo ang Sandigang Bayan ni eh. Dahil andun ang mga big time eh. Ang anak ko big time, wala ngang makain, walang pambiling gatas, ba diba? O big time ba ang tawag dun? Palabas nila, may barin. Sabi ko nga sa kanila, ay kayo ang may gawa niyan, hindi naman sa anak ko yan eh. Inilagay nyo lang yun ni eh. Tanong ng lahat ng mga kaanak, bakit kailangan pang patayin ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay? Kung um, totoo na may bisyo nga papa ko, pero kung sabihin natin magtitinda po siya, dito sana po maganda, maganda po yung buhay namin ngayon. Tulad po niya, nakita na mga pulis yung bahay namin. Ano lang naman po, trapal-trapal lang naman po yung dingding. Dapat alamin po na lang muna yung background ng isang adik bago po sila pumatay ng tao. <laughs> Yung po masasabi ko lang po dapat pag alam naman po nila na sumuko na pagbigyan po nila na magbago hindi naman po dapat lagi patay agad Pwede naman pong ikulong, di ba? Kahit ikulong na nila ng habang buhay, at least andyan. Wala, kasabihin pa lang po na ano, kung sino man pong gumawa niya at saka sino man pong ano, nagutos niya, malalagot po sa akin. Sasabihan, sasabihan ko po na masama. Kasi po, mga magulang ko din yun, tapos yung dami po rin na, namatay. Sa barangay Bagong Silangan, Quezon City, kinakanlong ng simbahan ng mga drug dependent na nais magbago. Dahil sa kawalan ng Comprehensive Drug Rehabilitation Program ng gobyerno, nag ang simbahan at komunidad para iligtas ang mga nalulong sa ilegal na droga. dito dahil sa pwedeng walang hanap buhay, pwedeng nagkaroon ng problema sa pamilya, pwedeng dahil itinulak ng pagkakataon. Halimbawa, yung isang basurero, yung isang matador, kaya siya gagamit dahil kailangan niyang uh, ma- makasurvive dun sa baho. No? Kailangan niyang hindi makatulog sa kanyang gawain. Pero kung maayos yung kanyang buhay, hindi siya gagamit nun. Ito po ay malaking negosyo na may malaking kumikita at nakikinabang. Kaya nga, merong nagpuprotekta. 
at sino yung nagpuprotekta sa haba ng panahon no nahandun din mismo sa loob ng gobyerno hindi mauwawala yung illegal na droga hanggang ang nagpapatupad din ng war on drugs ay yung involved doon sa illegal na droga Christmas wish ng mga batang na ulila sa war on drugs na mabuo ang kanilang pamilya. Alam nilang hindi na ito matutupad kailanman. Pero marahil, umaasa pa rin silang may makikinig at kakalinga sa kanila. everyone, we are now back to our discussion, Basic Principle of Marxism and Leninism, the Historical Materialism. So um, we are now opening our floors for the questions uh, from yourself. So if you have questions in mind, just drop it on the comment box so Tito Jo could answer it for you. Um, I think Tito Jo, um, there are already prepared, uh, there are already uh, questions that is being that has been sent to us. Um, the first question would be, sorry, um, Um, hold on, sorry. So the first question would be, um, I think I've lost it, sorry. Um, is it certain that, uh, is it certain that a certain form of society will transition towards the next? Uh, there is no certainty that a certain form of society would ascend to a higher form of uh, um, society. Uh, take for example, China had thousands of years of feudalism, so it should be logical that it developed within its womb uh, the elements of capitalism, but it did not. Uh, imperialism, uh, China itself uh, had its own um, internal wars, and then uh, in, uh, in the 19th century, British imperialism and other imperialist powers came no? and uh, took over, the, uh, they divided China among themselves so they they prevented the uh, uh, the rise of capitalism from uh, chinese feudal society as a matter of fact uh, a certain society can even sink to a lower level eh? for instance um, uh, the former socialist countries um, because of modern revisionism they 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 went back to uh, capitalism they restored capitalism instead of moving up to uh, communism, no? Um, and some people, uh, by the way, get confused with the term socialism and communism. Uh, Engels said uh, communism, uh, socialism is the first phase of, uh, of, of uh, communism, no? So some people say, oh, socialism is already communism. But there is a, a clear distinction also made by Marx. Uh, yes. between uh, socialism and um, communism. He said in socialism, you still get your wages according to the, to the quantity and quality of work you do. Um, uh, but um, in uh, uh, communism, uh, it's no longer according to your deeds, uh, to your deeds, but according to your needs huh? that, that you get um, uh, your share of the expanding production and it and the, there is the premise of superabundance in uh, in communism so anyway uh, <laughs> the question is uh, can you um, uh, is it always certain that from a certain level of uh, social development you go up to the next no tito next question that we have is um what society will come after communist society? Um, the the uh, social development will uh, will uh, uh, continue to develop even when communism is reached. Uh, society would go dead if uh, if uh, it uh, uh, ceases to develop. And uh, um, many commentators have said, uh, well. Uh, uh, never mind the uh, 
uh, speculations of Mao in uh, funny, some fun expe speculations he made uh, in his informal talks, you know. But uh, uh, it's a constant uh, view of uh, Marxists that in communist society there will always be a, a contradiction between the old and the new uh, ideas as well as, you know, uh, between the old conditions of society in of com the old the previous conditions of uh, uh, same communist society and the new conditions arising so um, the development of uh, uh, society even uh, under even in uh, even when communism has been achieved classless society has been achieved uh, does not stop so there will be higher forms uh, uh, you, because, you know, the advance of uh, society is cumulative. If, uh, if you attain a situation of superabundance, you know, some people fear, oh, because of uh, while well, you are still in socialism, uh, you're going to suffer the inefficiency of the state. Eh? And that's the usual uh, liberal and neoliberal argument. Uh, uh, you know, it's private enterprise that you can depend on uh, for uh, for uh, the getting the job done and uh, growing the economy and so on and so forth. No, uh, but you know, if you look at history in the building of socialist uh, countries, you know, uh, Stalin just a few decades uh, uh, was able to develop a strong. Uh, a, a politically and economically strong socialist society, even after the devastation uh, done by the fascist, um, the at the expense of uh, the Soviet Union. Soviet Union would be in a matter of ten years would uh, recover and uh, and uh, uh, become a great power like the stay on as a great power like the U.S. All right, Tito, um, our next question would be, um, uh, how can we, um, sorry, how can we sustain communism and how can we assure that it will not change into something worse than the capitalist society? Well, uh, while we can say optimistically that uh, uh, when you have reached such a high level of uh, social development, there is no going back to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, worse conditions or yes. to a worse, a worse form of society. Uh, you can degenerate even when you reach a certain level of uh, social development. For instance, socialism was achieved in uh, the Soviet Union and China, but there was a return to capitalism because of uh, the degenerates who introduced uh, uh, modern revisionism, the idea of uh, making socialism strong uh, by uh, making capitalist reforms and submitting to the um, uh, integrating the country uh, in the world capitalist system in order to gain certain advantages like uh, what uh, China uh, has been saying. It's possible um, uh, for a certain uh, high level of uh, social development to go down. Uh, and it can happen this way. Uh, if uh, let's say in the contradictions within that uh, 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 a certain society, uh, the you know the the negative forces, let's say, uh, describe them as negative forces, prevail over the positive forces, the progressive forces, the selfish, the greedy, and the greedy forces, and uh, take uh, power, and uh, or that society engages in. Um, in a fight with another another society, you know, yeah. and uh, there is uh, pro there are losses incurred, degradation of the society uh, because it is attacked or it is the attacker and waste its resources. So that happened to the Soviet Union on top of modern revisionism, Brezhnev's uh, adventurism because of its uh, social imperialist ideas wasted. Uh, uh, Soviet resources, it wasted resources in Afghanistan and so on and so forth. So uh, it can happen. No? Um, there are ups and downs, uh, twists and turns in history. Um, um, but there will be uh, there will be uh, a definite ascendance 
of the level of uh, social development in general because um, uh, humankind learns from experience and uh, you know there are certain factors in production uh, let's say in the application of uh, science and technology you uh, keep on improving the means of production and also the quality of life but uh, there is a big but no <laughs> With the use of the same advantages in science and technology, you create also the weapons of mass destruction, no? Huh? So, uh, let us say, uh, fascism rises within China, within the, within the um, uh, uh, Russia, huh? when the crisis of capitalism cannot be handled anymore, fascism rises there, like uh, when the fascism uh, arose in Germany and, uh, and uh, Japan, then you have big trouble, but this time the, th the trouble will be bigger because nuclear weapons are involved. No, now yes. another thing that can destroy not only not only any particular society but the entire society, uh, entire I mean to say entire human humankind. Uh, if you let monopoly capitalism plunder nature, the environment, as much as it wants in order to make profits. Humankind is also is also in trouble, so you know there are two threats. No, there are two big threats to the very existence of humanity. Yeah? Nuclear war. That means say. Uh, that means say. Uh, after the exchange of the nuclear exchanges, you're going to have a very cold weather. No, uh, you, you call what do you call that? Uh, winter. No nuclear wintering. No, and the other choice is with the constant degradation of the environment yeah, by the uh, uh, by the senseless uh, degradation uh, of the environment you're going to have a global warm, warming and uh, it's supposed to be you're supposed to be approaching now the tipping point no the icebergs are uh, melting faster than before and the forests are burning on a wider scale than before uh, the, the 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 level of the ocean is rising by some inches and so on and so forth. No? So that's another threat. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, society is a part of nature, no? and uh, it is uh, 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 hypothetically or philosophically possible for uh, humankind eh, to go extinct. Humankind is just is a relatively new thing. Eh? in in the in the uh, 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 in the universe uh, it evolved only in a few hundreds of thousands of years and and some tens of thousands of years to have uh, uh, to have some kind of uh, communal uh, uh, life and then um, it take it uh, you know this uh, this uh, what we call civilization is only about 10 percent of the history of Homo sapiens, you know, uh, or even less, you know, uh, that's only about uh, uh, 6,000 years, you know. So, uh, in other words, uh, humankind is subject to developments in the, in the universe or in the, uh, who knows, an asteroid will hit uh, planet Earth. <laughs> that's another, <laughs> that's another, that's another possibility. Part. But then, <laughs> uh, uh, while you are at the business of fixing a human society, you don't bother so much um, uh, all kinds of uh, adverse possibilities. You have to weigh the possibilities and then you keep on doing the revolutionary work. Otherwise, you become cynical and indifferent to the tasks uh, that must be undertaken. And precisely, it is the class struggle and revolutionary struggle that uh, can counter at least one danger no? for imperialism to make use of uh, nuclear weapons to, to in, in war no? uh, with people in, in the imperialist countries uh, understanding the problem uh, those weapons be can become useless you know there was a change of society uh, uh, socialism uh, or no not the, the revisionist uh, rulers could do nothing with their nuclear weapons they could not bomb their own people no when they were rising up because they were uh, dissatisfied already with the, with the uh, oppression and exploitation that they were suffering. Unfortunately, uh, the, the, the same revisionist leaders which deteriorated their life would lead them back to, to, 
capitalism, no? All right. Tito, next question naman, diba? Um, other questions would be, many use the example of the USSR and also China as an example of a failed communist society. Is this an accurate example or, or why is it erroneous to use those examples to um, prove co- uh, the effectiveness of communism? It, you can say it's a failed uh, socialist society, but you must uh, give the proper explanation that still capitalism that corroded it. You know? The revisionist uh, are the uh, virus yeah, of capitalism that uh, uh, inflicted a COVID type, uh, COVID-19 type of attack on socialism from the, <laughs> it, uh, it hit the lungs and uh, all the vital parts of uh, Chinese society. Dengism is, uh, is, is COVID-19. And uh, so, um, because you know, there's no denying that China has become capitalist and not only capitalist, but even an imperialist power taking over Philippine islands, I mean, taking over, the, violating the sovereign rights of the Filipino people and taking over uh, uh, the uh, um, the maritime features in our exclusive economic zone in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, no socialist country would do that. So there's no denying that China has become another vulture. But uh, the, the, the anti-communists uh, should not be happy that uh, uh, and claim that uh, uh, if they can say if it, if it is a matter of fact that uh, a certain socialist society um, uh, returns to capitalism, uh, mankind is in a better situation. No, we now we are now in a better situation. I don't mean to say we are now in a worse situation um, in which people suffer more now. The uh, deeper and graver crisis of capitalism and the more dangerous uh, contradictions between uh, the imperialist powers. The addition of two uh, imperialist powers uh, to the previous ranks of uh, imperialist powers has made capitalists put capitalism in bigger trouble and therefore uh, the conditions are again uh, are again favorable for socialism to bounce back. Real socialism this time uh, will learn from the lessons, um, uh, from the positive and negative lessons of the previous uh, uh, socialist societies that uh, failed. No? And there's uh, nothing wrong to. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's. Mm, it's okay to say uh, socialism uh, uh, failed because it was betrayed by those who were responsible. Uh, uh, for maintaining socialism, uh, you know, but uh, you know, the it's a case, the, the it's a case of uh, syntax, no, <laughs> because you know, it is as if uh, uh, socialism per se, eh? uh, uh, socialism by being good or being supposed to be good or by being by itself, no, uh, yeah. committed suicide, no, it was not. It, uh, uh, the, the real revolutionaries were beaten, defeated by the counter-revolutionaries who brought back socialism to China. Uh, um, Deng Xiaoping prevailed over the ghost of Mao uh, because he pulled his coup, he pulled a successful coup after the death of Mao. But that only goes to show that in the balance of forces within the Communist Party, within the state and society, um, the the proletarian revolutionaries, including Mao, uh, uh, could not anticipate everything. And uh, Mao used to make fun of them, shouting, "You see that little guy is so powerful." No, uh, he would make fun of him most of the time, like Stalin making fun of Khrushchev, no, making him dance. Uh, uh, what is this Russian dance? <laughs> and but uh, uh, he saw this guys uh, who turn against the. Uh, uh, against uh, socialism and uh, are often underestimated but they uh, they first gain the confidence of people within the, within uh, uh, the communist party rise up and then um, they have ideas other than marxism leninism all right um tito next question would be in what form of society is the philippines now according to the historical materialism and how will it transition towards socialism 
Oh, the Philippines right now with its semi-colonial and semi-feudal conditions cannot jump to socialism. It has to make, uh, it has to uh, take power first eh, from the, uh, the exploiting classes and must be able to fight against imperialism if, uh, if it uh, launches aggression. Uh, there is no guarantee that the U.S. will not come in to intervene uh, to, to by, by uh, going as far as to uh, launch an aggression. But in terms in terms of economic uh, development, you cannot jump. Uh, you cannot create suddenly the means of uh, large-scale production uh, overnight in a country where you have the most advanced uh, equipment imported from some cap developed country. Uh, the most advanced form, the most advanced uh, kind of equipment to make ice cream. Eh? Well, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> my German comrades were amazed eh? the, when they saw San Miguel uh, Magnolia having uh, better equipment than uh, they have in their si in German city. Uh, but you know, it is an, an economy that does not produce the equipment. No, You have to import the equipment by uh, selling cheap your raw materials and your bananas and uh, other agricultural products. <laughs> it is a, an economy uh, that has been, um, uh, you have the latest uh, computer equipment to count the money in banks, but you don't make the complete eh? uh, computer equipment. You can, you, you, the Philippines is only assigned to do some parts of a yeah. computer equipment, no? But um, so it has come to pass eh, that China monopolizes uh, the, you know, being the platform yes, uh, for yeah. putting together these uh, things, you know, and then uh, import and then exporting them to the US. Now there is trouble between the two because <laughs> the, the US uh, uh, pa uh, realizes that uh, uh, passing too much of the uh, or outsourcing uh, many of the processes to China. Um, uh, has also damaged the U.S. economy with the loss of jobs and so on and so forth. So you see, that's the kind of economy that we have. Uh, it's um, um, it, it's an economy uh, which is supposed to be agrarian, but its uh, agricultural practice is going down because it's now being swamped by imports from other countries, uh, and then it's supposed to be have some amount of industry but that industry is dependent on imported equipment and you're supposed you're supposed to have a philippines is supposed to have a super large uh, service sector uh, and that is that's a combination of um, bloated uh, of financially bloated uh, offices with imported equipment and the rest are you know um, the surplus uh, population uh, uh, doing odd jobs uh, that's part of the service sector. Those who don't have a regular employment that, but take odd jobs in uh, all sorts of uh, um, enterprises. So you cannot uh, jump to socialism. To socialism, there has to be even a, a period of transition. Usually in China, in Russia, uh, there would be um, a period of some years. It depends on the conditions. For instance, Russia was devastated. And so it took so they took some years uh, yeah. to do the what was called a new new economic policy, uh, just to revive the damaged economy. Uh, it was damaged by civil war and by by uh, uh, by the foreign intervention. And then in the case of China, uh, so there was the uh, damage also due to the uh, to the civil war and then the Korean War. Uh, the Korean War uh, burst out. So uh, the what was called the transition period lasted from 49 to something like 1956. Uh, and in the in the first three years, they had to do a lot of anti anti uh, corruption campaigning because you inherit many of the personnel of the old society, and so. Uh, corruption can uh, can arise, and the uh, and the and the Communist Party exercises the role of uh, watching who are the corrupt ones and the uh, the 
uh, they are taken care of no? uh, in various ways uh, to put uh, them uh, and then there's also you have to make sure that the, the counter-revolutionaries and the imperialists will not uh, upset your new regime so there are many requirements in transition so there can be no big leap the only instance in history eh, uh, where there is a leap eh, you know the germanic tribes uh, had um, while the, the land was expanded in germany uh, and the latifundias extended to germany uh, under the roman uh, uh, rulers but uh, the tribes uh, uh, had, uh, you know, had some communal, uh, have much of uh, communal. They were called barbarians, no? not just because they were foreigners, uh, uh, foreigners in their own land. But uh, you see, when they took power, uh, they took over the land. So they, uh, there was a mount, mount of slavery, uh, element of slavery in the in the Germanic tribes. Then. There was a big jump when they took over the lands. Uh, they were able to leap to feudal uh, conditions in a relatively short period of time. So th that's a case of uh, leaping over. But uh, uh, that's more exceptional. The, the sure way is to uh, really uh, um, uh, advance on the basis of, of, of certain elements, uh, stable elements, from a previous form of society um, like a socialism socialism really um, socialism is not possible uh, uh, if there is no development of large-scale machine production uh, in capitalism if the proletariat was not created by the bourgeoisie and all the means of production and taking advantage of science and technology were not produced uh, socialism would not have no basis, no material basis. Uh, so, actually, socialism will use the material base, the forces of production uh, that existed already in capitalist society. Uh, the only question there is to change the relations of production and then to recast the entire superstructure in favor of the proletariat. No. So um, I hope it's clear that the Philippines cannot make a jump, big jump to uh, socialism. But um, indeed, um, uh, we can put it this way to be clear. No? Uh, so the People's Democratic Revolution is a new democratic revolution in the sense that, that the proletariat is the ruling class. So the democratic revolution uh, essentially must be accomplished by liberating the peasantry uh, but actually the socialist revolution begins begins uh, it begins upon completion upon the basic completion of the democratic revolution um, with the seizure of political power socialist revolution begins but of course it begins from um, point one no or, uh, I say point one because it has certain industries to take over, even if uh, of an inferior kind, comprador type, and um, um, imported from um, the equipment is imported from abroad. Uh, but those are, and then of course uh, the other important uh, aspects of uh, the economy, the sources of raw materials would would be con under control by the by the working class, and they make sure that the natural resources should be used for the development of the country not for export to uh, uh, greedy china a china that's uh, that has a very sharp appetite for for natural resources uh, Tito, next question would be um how can we explain historical materialism to the masses or in what way we can easily explain it to them in a sense that they can easily grasp it you know the masses are what you might call practical materialists and practical atheists they will not be able to survive without uh, without uh, 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 their respect uh, for material things and what are the things that ma they must do in order to to survive no? uh, but i understand what you mean 
how to bring to the peasants the philosophizing and yes. the explanation and the explaining uh, yes um, how to account because you know leave the peasants for themselves they might be believe in uh, animism no or um, a mix of animism and what the uh, what the priests say whenever they go to the town during town fiestas, no? or uh, you know, the, whenever the, the the priest visits the the village chapel, no. So there could be a mix of superstition and so on and so forth. So uh, there is work because you know it's bet it's better to have systematic thinking uh, than no than than none because without systematic victim you. Uh, Without systematic thinking, you, you become a victim of all kinds of, uh, of unscientific thinking. So that's uh, how do you bring... Uh, um, when you explain uh, materialism, you must explain it in terms, of, uh, in terms that they can understand. Uh, the best thing to do is, uh, if you know a bit of agriculture, we may ex explain uh, how, uh, how things are and what man can do the peasant can do uh, in order to grow a plant and so on and so forth um you you don't uh, you don't express uh, you don't use terms outside of the experience they will come to that no in due time but the best thing to do to achieve immediate uh, understanding of uh, materialism you have to you have to um you have to use terms that they can easily understand uh, terms that they come across in their daily lives. I'm just thinking about that. I'm just talking about uh, methods. And then I've seen peasants uh, who have learned philosophy, political economy, and they're, they're better thinkers. Eh? They come out as better thinkers after a number of courses uh, than professors, the bourgeois pedantic professors in the university uh, who are, uh, you know, who imbibe the latest nonsense from foreign universities. Uh, uh, England is a good source of uh, uh, all kinds of uh, model thinking, also the US. And there are certain, the best universities so-called are actually centers uh, for uh, uh, confounding people. So, um, I, I would say, you know, uh, <laughs> that uh, the senators are dumb compared to the peasants already schooled by the revolutionary movement concerning imperialist domination of the Philippines. They, the senators uh, either pretend or do not really know eh, what imperialism is. Next question, Tito, would be how do you make sure that there will be no revisionists in the party or which have caused the downfall of socialist states? um before well uh, there is the experience it happens yes. no? so yes. that is um, that is part of the treasury um you know uh, marxism and leninism uh, for a certain period of time would concentrate on how uh, stalin lenin stalin and marx built socialism and how they defeated the enemy but uh, uh, the most that they knew about revisionism was the revisionism in the second international and uh, the revisionists were merely tales of the bourgeoisie in the in the bourgeois parliament they did not anticipate eh, the revisionist uh, developing within the communist yeah. party <laughs> and within the state no Although they, say they, they they would know in general that there are always vestiges of the old exploiting classes and they can re-emerge, no? Uh, because, you know, I may be a landlord, no? In the old society defeated by the communists, no? But I will tell my children, oh, these lands used to belong to us, but this damned communist took over the land and distributed to these no good peasants, no? That could be... <laughs> And, uh, and then and then the the the, ch the, the children uh, will even enjoy free education no uh, but they you know some reactionary ideas are already planted no and then the landlords ex explain to themselves and to their families very well within their narrow in their own narrow way how good feudalism is they will tell you you know uh, God created us 
with different uh, lengths of fingers and uh, because but if you make all the fingers the same uh, you can do less you know? and then um, it's in uh, and then they'll say there are really lazy people uh, they assume that the uh, exploiters are uh, uh, the most uh, industrious people no that's why uh, that's why uh, peasants cannot advance from their par uh, from their condition of tenancy because they're dumb then they would say that no uh, and um, and then oh it's not good to equalize people because all of us will be poor no our properties uh, our uh, big house our big land would be divided and we all become poor and god uh, really ordained that uh, there must be uh, there must be the landlords and rulers uh, who will make sure that palaces are built no and churches are built and so on and so forth no because <laughs> you know they assume communism or socialism to be uh, a division of the uh, forces of production uh, the social conditions that persist in their own kind of society no and so they think that if uh, let us say uh, uh, if uh, especially you know in uh, feudal families uh, they can only think in terms of the limited conditions but you know in capitalism uh, you, the uh, it's different huh? uh, if um, uh, because uh, you know only a few uh, billionaires uh, own 80 percent no of the entire world so there is a lot of thing there is a lot of wealth to divide and yeah. estimates are that if you divide the, the wealth in the hands of the bill uh, the the bill gates and uh, uh, all these uh, uh, billionaires uh, everyone would have a good life you know so um, the there is more expanse for the argument social socialist argument in a well-developed capitalist society because everything is there that can that can be dealt with in an equal way without anyone exp without uh, some few people exploiting so many people um, uh, in order to uh, for them to have their their wealth and their luxuries yes Tito. anyway Tito, i think that was the la uh, that is the last question that has been sent by the audience and unfortunately to our viewers uh currently it's 27 and um uh our floors is now closed for the question so thank you so much for participating and being with us so um Tito, i think we have already closed the floor for questions and uh, we have already ended the discussion uh, uh, mga kasama, dyan po nagtatapos ang ating discussions sa the, histor the basic principle of Marxism and Leninism, the historical materialism. Stand by, stand by next week po for our next discussion, which is the political economy. This is on August 23, 2020, same time, 2 p.m. UK, 3 p.m. Central, and uh, 9 p.m. sa Philippines. Uh, same and same things, of course, dito sa um, Facebook Live na Anak Bayan Europa. Make sure to note this on your calendars and catch updates on our Facebook group and the line online for updates. At huwag kalimutang mag-like, mag-share, at mag-imbita upang sumali sa ating makabuluhan at nakamumulat na takalayan, talakayan dito lang sa National Democratic Line Online School Series with Tito Jo. Muli, Maraming salamat po sa pakikibahagi. Ako po si Kasamang Christ. Tito Jo, baka meron po kayong gustong sabihin to our viewers before we, um, we end. Uh, thank you for uh, participating in this web webinar. Um, I hope that uh, you've been able to um, uh, pick up some ideas and uh, uh, enlighten you on uh, matters that need uh, uh, some explanation. And uh, I hope that you come to the next, you uh, participate in the next uh, episode uh, because this is a four uh, part series and it would be uh, good for you to complete uh, the series uh, in order to have a complete view of what is the content of the basic principles of uh, Marxism Leninism. All right. Thank you so much, Atito Jo. Muli ako po si Kasamang Christ, Kasamang Tito Jo. Mapagpalayang gabi po para sa ating lahat.
Ah, panoorin po natin ang video, tribute video po para kay Karandi sa ating closing. Tek, paki-play na po. Kita po sa pagpatay. Huwag nilang sabihin binakawan. Eh, nandun yung laptop, eh. Nandun yung ibang mga gamit, eh. Kung magsanakaw yung limas na yun. Ang alawa, huwag nilang sabihin ng labas. Wala siyang arbas. Kalipalik kami rin naman. Nagyan nyo man ngayon ng uh, party pa ng yung aning katawan niya. Pwede mga ano, ilusot. Huwag niyo krimen. Walang niya. Dalawang baril sa ula. Dalawang tama sa ula. Mahigit 30. Mahigit 30 na saksak. Dinama po yan ng mga taong walang konsensya. Nasaan ba ang pinakamahal ano? Nasaan mga taong walang konsensya ngayon? Di ba kahit simple yung mga mga yan, magsasabi na sa gobyerno? Lintik na buhay ko. Hindi tanga ang mamamayang Pilipino. Hindi mamang ang mga magsasaka. Tulad ng mga pinagkakalat ng nasa ilalim ng administrasyon ngayon. Tinatanga binubobo ang mamamayan. At yan ang gusto mangyari ng administrasyon na ito. Sa pagpapay kay Garanti, inigisip nila Pakahimik tayo. Pero pakahimik pa tayo, mga kasama? Hindi! Pakahimik pa tayo? Hindi! Isa po ang sigaw ng mamamayan ngayong araw na ito ang katarungan para kay Karati. Pero hindi nagbabaliw ang panawagan ang isinisigaw ng mga kabataang Randy at Janice noong panahon ng first quarter storm, noong panahon ng mas matindi ang nabukid ng diktadura ni Marcos dito sa ating magpahanggang ngayon. Ito po ay ang makibaka ng buong 